Right, Strongman fan, welcome back to the MSD Systems YouTube channel where we talk all things Strongman. If that's your scene, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Now today, we're going to be doing a bit of a natty or not on Mr. World's Strongest Man 2006, Phil Fister. It's something that I get asked a lot in my DMs, really. Not about Phil Fister directly, but about natural athletes that have competed at high level at World's Strongest Man. I want to take a look today at, at Mr. Phil Fister, 2006 World's Strongest Man. Back when I was first getting into Strongman, I actually watched, I don't know, I think it was a DVD or something of Phil Fister's training for the 2006 World's Strongest Man. It was very, 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 very different to what I expected. And uh, I actually remember thinking, oh, if this is how the World's Strongest Man trains. This is how I'm going to train. And me and my mate, we did a bit of a training block that was somewhat similar similar to the how it's, it's an SAQ style training block. You don't apply that training modality unless you've had the years to build the foundation for it to work. But we obviously didn't know that and we just randomly did it. And yet, let's just say it didn't win the world's strongest man. <laughs> but Phil Fist is an interesting athlete because he's competing at world's strongest man for a long time. He's in the strongman scene for a very, very, very long time. And he did have an extremely standout performance of the 2006 world. And I believe... I'm gonna say it straight off the bat. I believe that Phil Fister was natural. I really do. And I'm saying this, I've never researched if he's openly admitted to PED use or anything. As far as I know, he does say he's natural. I personally believe him. And we're gonna go into a bit of depth as to why. Let's take a look at this man's physique. This is, these are just some pictures off Wikipedia. The thing that I always look at is the delts. Delts and traps are a big giveaway as to if someone is using PEDs. Because in naturals, they tend, obviously you can grow your delts as a natural, I'm not saying you can't. They tend to be a muscle group that, that will grow uh, when someone uses PDs and take a look at the bloke. He's obviously, he's a big dude. He's at Worlds. He just doesn't have the features that you would expect. Obviously, he's got traps, he's got delts. I'm not saying he doesn't, but he just doesn't have the features that you would generally see from someone who's taken a lot of PDs. He has quite a similar physique as well year round. If you take a look at him in multiple different competitions, he has a similar looking physique. He doesn't drastically change over the years. Whereas if you look at someone like Eddie Hall, when Eddie was first competing in strongman. He was a big dude, but he gradually got bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the time he was at like the peak of his lifting where he, he won world, I don't know the kilo difference, but I would say, I think he was about 140-ish when he was first on the scene winning like England's and Britain's and stuff. And then as he got to that, you know, 500 pull, I think he was like 190 kilo. And then at Worlds, maybe it was like 170, 175 at Worlds. His physique has changed over the years. He's grown and grown and grown and got worse. Phil Fisher, very similar looking physique and very similar body weight for most of his shows. And the, one of the things that stands out with Phil as to why I believe that he's, he's natural, he's obviously extremely clever. And if you look at the events of the 2006 World's Strongest Man, you might start to see how it's possible for a natural athlete to win World's Strongest Man. We've got events like the Farmer's Walk, the Keg Toss. There's a car deadlift, a car walk. There was an overhead stone press, barrel loading race, cannonball carry, sled drag, fingers, finger, power stairs, bus pull, and Atlas stones. This is an extremely dynamic competition. The car deadlift as well. The thing with a car deadlift is it is a static event. But I remember reading somewhere, this is literally off the top of my head from about 10 years ago, by the way. But I remember, because I was very interested in Philip Pister's training for this world back in the day. And I was, I, I remember reading to it. And, and I remember that the car deadlift was an event that because of the strength curve being slightly different, that he was able to get away with a better performance than it would have been if it was like a regular stiff straight bar max deadlift or something. And this is something that I've seen over the years in Strongman as well. You know, people lose car... The biggest deadlifter doesn't always win the car deadlift. Just how it works. The best car deadlifter can win the car deadlift. Now, that, that's obviously not true all the time. You know, sometimes someone's deadlift so far ahead that they're just going to win. In England's 105, Aaron Moody, one of our clients, who at the time, he's pulled 300 now, he's pulled his first 300 now, but at the time, he had pulled 300 kilo. He managed to get more reps on the car deadlift than lads that had pulled in the uh, mid threes because he was able to utilize the strength curve better, etc. The car deadlift there is an event that favors a little bit of a natural lifter if they can master the mechanics and get more out of the specific implement. Then you've got like the keg toss, barrel loading, fingers, finger, power stairs, cannonball carry into sled drag. You know, those events, the dynamic speed-based events, I would actually say that for the most part, being natural favors you in a lot of those events, like the um, cannonball carry into sled drag. People using PEDs, they can't handle the pump. 
legs back get pumped faster, unable to be putting maximum effort into the sled drag till the very end because the, you know they're too busy getting pumped and they can't feel the legs and feet and the backs pumped, etc. Same with the, the loading race, back pump and gassing a little bit quicker because of the effects that the higher dose PD is going to have. Fingles finger, again, it, it, it is a strength-based event, but it's very skill-focused and dynamic and conditioning. And these are things that do sometimes favor a natural athlete. Bus pull and um, keg toss. Again, if you train these and you train them well, I don't really think that PDs necessarily have the biggest impact. If you were to look at percentage-based, a truck pull, you know, versus a, a strict over a press, for example, you get someone that's natural, that trains the bus pull really fucking hard, really well, masters the mechanic and the technique and gets the body weight to the correct zone they need. And then you put them on PEDs. I think that the percentage increase in, in, in the performance is going to be very low. Whereas on a strict overhead press, you get a guy natural doing the perfect training block, recovering, etc but then you still stick him on PED, he's gonna have a huge jump up. Even if he changes nothing, he's gonna have a huge jump up. Whereas the bus pull, the keg toss, etc., it's, it's gonna be an increase, but it's not gonna be that that it you know tips it over the edge. Looking at Phil Fister's training for this world is really interesting. So we've got him doing, uh, let's say, SAQ, speed agility, quickness training, these upright, cable upright rows, going into triple extension, getting up on his tippy toes. I'm assuming this is to help with uh, like the keg toss that he was doing. He did a lot of BOSU ball work, a lot of balance work. So he's doing squat jumps here, landing onto the BOSU ball, GHD back extension, isometric ball throws. Yeah, loads of Swiss ball work here. He's doing Swiss ball push-ups. Again, explosive jumps with... I believe that's some kind of band resistance that's pulling him forwards there. Cable pull throughs into triple extension. I'm assuming this is for like the keg toss again. Then he's got his truck pull training that he's doing here. Like I say, he's putting the effort into mastering the mechanics and the positions rather than, you know, relying on pure brute strength and weight. This here is like some conditioning drill he was doing. I actually, you know, I said I did the trail. I, I did this. We got some, <laughs> we did, I didn't even know what I was doing, but we just literally got a load of heavy med balls and I was like, well, Phil Vista did it and he won world. So I'm just going to chuck balls over the rack. <laughs> <laughs> What's the word? There's no like thought to it. You know, there was no planning. There was no, oh, we're going to do this, do that, do this, transition here. And yeah, there was, there was just like, get some stuff for over the rack. Phil Fister did it. So yeah, I did this. I think we had a couple of light sandbags, like 20 key as well. We we're chucking them over. Salt Air must hated us. As I say, his training was extremely unique. This isn't the type of training that you expect from someone who won World's Strongest Man, is it? He was obviously very smart, looked at the events, and um, I think his highest placing was about fourth before this. So it wasn't like he was a bad athlete or something. I mean, he's at Worlds, it's obviously good. But what I mean is the thing that put the cherry on the cake for him was the events being suited for a natural, his training, going all in on training that is a little bit different to what you would normally do and reaping the rewards of that for the competition. Yeah, so he's doing these uh, unilateral step-ups with slow eccentric. He's got a weighted vest on, as well as dumbbells. Not sure why, shot the body and all that. You know, you think you just hold heavier dumbbells, wouldn't you? But maybe not. He's doing these side step RDLs, and now he's balancing on a BOSU ball. BOSU ball rows. I told you his training's crazy for this world. This training won a world. Mad. He's in his Ollie shoes, it looks like there. No, he is doing some deadlifts. He didn't just train, obviously, he didn't just train like this. He's doing some heavy deads as well. He does some heavy pressing and whatnot. But again, majority of his training block, I believe, was SAQ for this Worlds. And he's doing slow eccentric uh, tap and go deadlifts there. Shuttle runs. Again, this is a this is a completely different style of training than that you would expect from the um, most um, strongmen leading up to a competition. Like, this is usually a training block that would be in the phase before a competition peak, isn't it? But this is what you use for competition, apparently. So here he's doing Bosu ball bear crawl, I believe, with dumbbells and then dying. That must have been hard. So yeah, overall, his training isn't something that you could look at for that 2006 Worlds and go, oh, he's natural, he's not natural. It's completely different style of training that's suited for the specific type of competition that was coming up. And yeah, pretty interesting, I think. When we look at him actually lifting, so this here is the, the stone press. Now, so this is him actually at the 2006 Worlds. You can see by looking at his physique, guys, he is, at, look at his arms. He's not got bicep on top of bicep. He's not got delts. He's not, you know what I mean? 
this does not look like the physique of an enhanced athlete that has just peaked for the biggest show that he's going to do this year. This doesn't look like a guy who's popped a load of anadrols prior to the competition and filled out and got pumped. His blood pressure doesn't look like it's sky high, you know. And this stone press here, it's a hundred kilo. That was actually the second stone. I'm going to go back. This is 225 pound, I believe. 227 pound. It's about 100 key, and he presses it well. But again, it's 100 kilo. Is it realistic that a natural guy strip presses 100? Of course it fucking is. I, I did that when I was about 18. It's 229 pounds, so only two pounds heavier, but I guess it's the shape that's uh, maybe hard. And he, he does get the press, I believe. Does he get that press? Yeah, he gets that press. And um, this one's now 250 pounds, 247. So this is about 115 kilo or something, I guess. It's all about balance to stone press. Oh, he's push pressing it as well. Good, yeah, so this is what I mean, like, He's push pressing that weight, guys. You know what I mean? Most world's guys, 115, 120 kilo, whatever it is, stone, like that, they'd be strict pressing it. Phil's uh, not got the power and static strength to be able to strict press that. But what he's got is he's got the position, he's got a good dip, he's got good leg drive, he's got good timing, and he's trained well for it. So this is a 300 pound stone. This is a very impressive block if he presses this actually. I don't even know if he gets this. Gets it set, push presses. Yeah, so yeah, that's great. Look how dynamic it is though. You can see the results of his training. Good dip, loads of power. Yeah, that's great. But he hadn't, he hadn't walked over there. He's not walked over to it, fucking stiff as a board and fucking strict pressed everything, is he? You know. He's fluid, he's fast, he's got good positions. I think he's natural, I'll be straight. At this show, I think he's natural. I don't know if after this, I don't know what, but fingers finger again. Like I say, it's not the type of event that requires PDs in my opinion. Look at his technique, perfect. He's conditioned, he's powered it up and he's using his legs and hip drive to, to move the, and his body weight to move the finger. He's not trying to press it, his arms are straight. Good technique, really experienced, seasoned strongman. So you can you can really tell that he knows exactly what he's doing, where to go, etc. And look how fast that run was, awesome. Doesn't look like to me the kind of um, performance or, or movement of, of someone crazy enhanced, that makes sense. Truck pull now. So he's been training this, we've seen a bit of training footage for it. He's getting a nice start. The truck port's all about getting a good start on the truck. Look at the angle, look at his torso angle. He's got great torso angle, he's maintaining it throughout. Short pulls on the rope. This is the thing about a rope on a truck pull, you wanna be short, you don't wanna reach, okay? It's like an arm over arm on a truck pull, short, because you're using the arms to assist the uh, the legs, you're not, you're not letting him take over. Oop, he's slowing down. Is he gonna make it? No. <laughs> Car walk. Perfect, good technique, look at this. Time to beat 27. Well, the man's flying, isn't he? Twenty-five, twenty-six, boom! Well done, class. He's doing good. <laughs> these these events are really like you don't need to be juiced to the gills to be good at yoke runs. Stone run. So again, these stones you don't need to be juiced to the gills to be do, to be good at stones. These it's like a speed event. Look at Puds throwing it on there. Man's a savage. Boom! Fist is right behind him. Fister with the one motion. Well done, buddy. Another one motion. I wonder who's going to win this stone event. Oh, they're very close. Puds has walked it in first and Phil's not walked it in. Ooh, oh, he won all. Puds has rolled off. Crazy. What a fucking performance. Class. Class. Here he is with his trophy. See, even there, like, you know what I mean? He doesn't just... It doesn't really look to me. You can just kind of tell. When you've been around the scene for a while, you can just kind of tell when someone's juiced to the gills. I don't think he is. I don't think he is. What do you guys think? Personally, 
I think that with those events right there, with the way he trained for it, with how his performance went, by how his physique looks, by how his physique's looked over a period of the years of the, that he's been competing in Strongman, I just think it's likely that he is natural at this competition. I believe Phil Fister will World's Strongest Man 2006 as a natural athlete. Is it possible that somebody else could come along and win World's Strongest Man natural? Straight up, I believe that it could happen, but I think it would have to be something that would, it would be very, very, it would be like extreme, so many things would have to align. If there was someone out there that was amazing at certain events, like it's very easy to get a natural athlete who's good at stuff like arm over arm and farmer's walk and stones and sandbags. And, you know, they just, they just built that way, like farmer strength. You know what I mean? If, if somebody came along like that and then world, the events happened to line up that they really, really suited someone like that, then I could see it happening. I think it's going to be a fucking one or 2% chance of us seeing it. I'm not saying it's impossible. Just like Phil Fister proved there, it's sometimes not about having this crazy base of static strength and muscle tissue and just pure brute power. It sometimes can be about speed, agility, quickness. And if you train for that and you're already good at it, like Phil was already exceptional at that stuff. They were his strengths. And then he's seen the competition, mapped out this training block and training phase to complement all the strengths he's already got and build upon them. So yeah, I think Phil Fister... One World Strongest Man 2006 is natural. Maybe you disagree. Who knows? Who gives a fuck? Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you do for more. And I'll uh, see you next week, motherfuckers.